uh, translate this question. Um, hi Hanko, last days I uh, found, a, um, found a question. If somebody is trying to cheat you via an, uh, a web shop and you feel that this person is sending a negative energy to me, mm. what is the best way to deal with this without getting into an energetic war? Uh, do you bend the energy which is directed to you away from you? Do you block it? Um, or do you harden your own energy and or try to send a clear message? What is the most harmonious and most ethical form to deal with such a situation? So the question is about energetic confrontations and the role of uh, willpower and also the role of uh, help, uh, such as spiritual guides in this. And is it possible to force a, a specific outcome or is the, it better to use Wu Wei, just let things happen, let things go? Um, hmm. Well, that's an interesting question. Um, and there is not really a one standard answer to uh, uh, to to deal with this, um, the important thing is is also to realize that many things which happen to you are actually uh, lessons or challenges or uh, mirrors, reflections, um, and if these things happen, they will happen again and again and again until you've learned your lesson or dealt with the impurity inside yourself, which is still attracting these events or dealt with possibly the, the family karma or um, past life events which are still bringing these things onto your path. Um, so in this case fighting is, is useless because you can chase away or remove that energy f for one time but it will just happen again and again and again. Um, so in, in such a case it is not useful to fight but just to, to go into meditation and to observe what is my role in this, how am I allowing this, or how am I attracting this. Um, it is also possible that it is uh, a distraction, so it is actually not something which has anything to do with you. You are doing well, you are going on your own spiritual path, you are having your own spiritual growth, and these things come along and they distract you and they yeah, try to stop your spiritual growth by creating a distraction, or it can indeed be um, a specific attack by another force which may be hostile to you which can use many different people in your surroundings and instead of fighting the person you have to find out like which is the spiritual power or spiritual group which is actually behind this and which is using all these people to attack me um, so uh, in, in this case we would have to, to look a little bit at what is the uh, uh, yeah what is the real situation um, so there were um, yeah some one of the things is indeed um, where two people fight two people lose because you cannot really fight without losing without getting hurt uh, so any victory is in a way um, uh, a parent victory. So you may win, but even though you win, you also lose. You, you lose your energy, your energy body gets damaged, you lose your focus. And even by winning all the time, you can lose. Um, so the only way in which indeed fighting or victory is, is useful is either as practice to improve your skills or to improve your willpower or to get the other person to go away on a very um, yeah with a minimal amount of effort because if a person keeps on bothering you keeps on attacking you then sometimes you have to send a signal like okay this is not appreciated and if you continue uh, it will not be nice for you either um, so it is important in a way to, to use your, your aggression or your response as a good signal function rather than uh, as a method of escalation. Um, so it can be done in, in two ways. 
one of the ways is to say that I'm just using a minimal amount of effort uh, to, to make sure that the other person feels me or understands me. Um, so you look a little bit for where is the other person's energy focused and what type of signal would work best. So if they're very material in nature, then uh, sending a material response uh, will work best. If they're very mental, then you have to approach them on a mental level. If they're emotional, approach them on an emotional level. If they're very much into spirituality, do it in that way. And if you find that the other person is on a very different level or in a very different vibration, where you don't feel at home and you feel you can't really reach the other person, uh, then it's often good to find a messenger. Um, so, for instance, if another person only understands aggression, this is his language, this is the only way he knows how to communicate, and you're not very good at aggression or communicating in an aggressive way, then you need to get a messenger. And the messenger who will just yeah, talk to him in an aggressive way, to yeah, shove him in a way energetically or physically and say like, Listen, if you don't stop, bad things will happen. You hit her once more and I will beat you up. <laughs> so, but, and these messengers, they can be, in, of course, in physical forms. But you can also ask friends uh, to do this, or you can ask other spirits to do this, or spiritual allies uh, to do this. So, what I often do is I ask uh, my guides to talk to the other person's guides, because the other person's guides, if all goes well, they should have good access to their human. Um, and if he, his own guides can't reach him, you can be pretty sure that other spirits or other spiritual forces also won't be able to reach him. So often working through a person's own guides is usually the, uh, the easiest way of access. And also the person's guides have their own human's best interest in mind. Um, so if you can explain to him, like, uh, to them, like, okay, I don't want to hurt your human, I just want him to stop bothering me, and um, I think it might be best for all involved, so could you try to get your human to stop doing this? Um, so this is generally a, a very uh, ethical, uh, very friendly way, and also these guides can sometimes explain, like, no, we can't, yeah, get our human to stop bothering you because you have a karma together or um, yeah, because you belong to opposite groups together. So often these guides will yeah, provide more insight into why the conflict is, is taking place. Um, sometimes you, f you will find that the other person um, has a lack of understanding. So they don't know that they're bothering you or harming you or hurting you or that their behavior is wrong because they think it is normal or good behavior which they're showing. They might think I'm being assertive, I'm being uh, taking care of myself, uh, not realizing that they're actually being aggressive and imposing or, or domineering. And in case when people have no evil intentions but lack of knowledge, I find it's usually best to work through the dream body. Um, so when the person is, is unconscious in their dreams, they can also learn things. And it is possible to um, either meet this person in their dreams and to try to explain things or to give him experiences or her experiences so that they can develop more understanding of what you are going through or what your type yeah, side of the story is. And it's a more direct method than uh, going through the guide, so it's also a little bit more intrusive already. But um, I've had very good experiences with, uh, with working through dreams with people who were bothering other people and just um, yeah, dreaming with them for a few nights and a few times can really develop a lot of insight in the other person so the other person will stop. Uh, yeah, because of their enhanced knowledge, or because they uh, feel that in yeah that in your dreams it is often much easier to communicate because on the astral all things are visible, visible. So your emotions, your thoughts, your experiences are visible. So there's less explanation, less miscommunication involved. 
if you can manage to, to dream together. So these are very nice ways without um, escalations. Um, the uh, technique of learning how to deal with negative energies, uh, can, it can be done in, in, in lots of different ways. Um, so you can work on it on, on, on actually roughly three levels. The level of the astral, the level of life force and the level of elemental energies. So uh, if you look at it from an elemental perspective, all communication is generally um, uh, carried by, by air spirits, air elements. Um, all experiences have to do with, uh, with water, all structures have to do with earth and all um, growth and destruction have, have to do with fire. So if you don't want the, the other person's energy to come to you, you would work with air elementals and try to create an armor or a barrier between you and the other person using these, uh, these air spirits or air elementals. If you want the other person um, to uh, yeah, lose the ability to send these energies to you, or if you want to change yourself, so you're no longer receptive for his energies, you would use earth energies. So if you change yourself, this is relatively okay, you have the right to do that. To change another person's energy body is, well, usually quite heavy-handed method, it's considered black magic, because you're in a way altering another person's being without their consent. It's a little bit like beating somebody up or raping somebody, so it's not the nice option, but it's a very effective option. Um, if you look at the emotional level um, or the experience level, um, usually what happens is not the problem, but how you experience what happens is the problem. So if somebody sends me energy and it's my lover or my dog or my cat, then I like that energy, I enjoy feeling that energy. And if there's a person I really hate at work or in some other way sending me energy, I feel attacked, I feel uncomfortable, I feel unhappy, I feel threatened. And this is because not by necessity their energy is, is harmful, but my reaction to the energy is harmful. And by using the water element and water elementals, you can change your reaction, your patterns in how you experience to the energy. So in the same way like some people might dislike fighting and feel very stressed when they have to fight, other people enjoy fighting and they see it as a game and um, so this attitude can be changed by using the water elements and also again you can try to change the other person's attitude or your own attitude where your own attitude is usually the best choice to make. Um, and using the fire element is also uh, possible um, but it is a lot more dangerous than using the other elements um, because fire is a very volatile element and if uh, you use too much of it it can have yeah, unpredictable side effects but it can be used to transmute uh, the energies which are coming from the other person um, because often energy in itself is not a problem, it is just that the energy has hardened into a certain shape. Um, so for instance, if I want to harm somebody with my energy, I um, shape this energy using my anger or my hatred or negative uh, visualizations and um, my own energy is not what is harmful, but it is the shape which I have given to my energy which makes it into something harmful and if I use very positive ideas like my love and I want to heal the other person then my energy becomes a healing power, a healing force and using this fire element you can actually remove the programming which is, is attached to the energy so the energy becomes neutral so it doesn't become healing, it doesn't become harmful but just a neutral energy, his energy is there but it's no longer has an agenda, it no longer tries to pull you in a certain direction or push you in a certain direction and you can just allow it to exist without having to, uh, to fight it and um, you can in a way program yourself 
so that um, uh, when this energy of this person comes towards you that you react with this fire energy and this fire energy is um, in a way neutralizes the energies which are coming uh, coming at you. Uh, so this is a training and often if you practice this for about a week and you do this every day and um, you can then it becomes a reflex so in the beginning you have to think about it every time you feel this energy you have to do that but if you do it very yeah, consistently then you, you can quickly build up these uh, energetic reflexes. So this is when you want to deal with it on an elemental level. If you want to deal with energetic attacks on a, a level of life force, um, you look at how your own aura and your own chakras react to these energies. So um, you can also see this in another video I've made on energetic uh, self-defense, that there are actually um, the four chakras which often indicate that there is an energy which is um, yeah, unpleasant for you. These are the stomach chakra, the heart chakra, the throat chakra and the third eye. And the reactions of these chakras uh, often indicate also a different type of attack. So if it is an attack, um, an energy which is just inimical to your being, to your nature, and it is um, in a way very oppressive, very structural, usually a heavier energy, it often affects the stomach chakra and often people will feel tension around the stomach, difficulty breathing, uh, they might feel nauseous. Um, so this is often um, an attack which uh, has to do also with a, with a dominant struggle. Who is the dominant force? Um, when you have an effect on the throat chakra, uh, often the feeling is being short of breath, sort of feeling as if you're being choked. And this is usually due to um, wrong information or wrong programming which you're receiving. So the other person is trying to, um, to invade your mind, to give you ideas uh, which are hostile to you. Or um, sometimes also trying to give you visions which are uh, which are hostile to you. Uh, so in a way they're trying to reprogram you but not on a very fundamental level as with the stomach chakra but on a more subtle level so it is often more illusionary drawing them into their reality uh, where you feel the, the problem with the throat chakra. The heart chakra problems are usually not felt as keenly as the, as the throat and the stomach. Um, because the heart chakra is more flexible by nature, so it tends to open and close. But if the heart chakra closes, it also feels often a little bit heavy and it can generate a tight feeling around the chest. And this is basically just a choice not to connect to this energy. And this is more of a spiritual choice. And um, often by looking at the heart chakra, you can also tell if something is a challenge which you're supposed to face or just something you're supposed to ignore. So even though like my throat or my stomach chakra might close up, if my heart chakra is open, it is like my spirit is enjoying this and I'm willing to face my enemy and to learn from him or her in this energetic combat. And if my heart chakra is closed, actually it shows that my spirit is not interested in this fight or in these problems. And I should just move on and yeah, let it pass and not spend too much time and energy in, in dealing with it. It's something to be minimized rather than to be engaged. So the heart chakra often tells you the importance of the problem which you're facing. Um, the, um, the headaches which uh, people get, they often um, indicate that something is disharmonizing you. So often people get headaches if the energy in a certain place is, is not good. So if you come into a space where people have been fighting, there's been an argument or the place is cursed or there are evil spirits or heavy energies there, this often generates headaches and it can also yeah, generate also the other problems. Um, often also if a person is attacked by other spirits, 
um, this also yeah, manifests itself as headaches and also the uh, attempt at implantation, so invasion of the astral body when a person is trying to curse you or to hurt your en energy body directly is often manifest as a headache. Um, so headaches are often really direct attacks on your spiritual body and these must be dealt with uh, accordingly, also in an energetic manner. But often, like if you feel yeah, more of a choking feeling or a nauseous feeling, these are usually indirect attacks. So just a person who has an energy which is unpleasant to you or which you react to in a bad way, but it's often not that the person is actively trying to curse you or attack you with, uh, with their energies. It is just that you react poorly to it. Um, then we have the, uh, the astral level. So the astral level is something you would get involved with if really the attack is, um, is of a spiritual nature or a deeper nature. There is um, a link between your energy body and the other person's uh, energy body. And often astral attacks can happen also in, uh, in dreams or through the dream body. Um, on the astral level, it is very important to, um, to have harmony. So, and if your energy is more harmonious than your opponent's energy, you will be the dominant one in the combat. And if the other person's energy is more harmonious, then they will be the dominant force. And so the attacks are often aimed at disrupting the harmony of the other person's energy body. And a uh, disrupted astral body will often result in physical pain, physical sickness, um, and also uh, can result in, in mental pain and mental sickness. So the effects are not as direct um, as it is with um, yeah, uh, attacks on an elemental level or on a life force level, but they can have very long lasting effects. So often an astral attack will, yeah, it will. Yeah, influence you for, for weeks and so often if you find that yeah, if you are in contact with a person and you get out of contact with that person and like the next day you're feeling better then often there's not an astral battle taking place but if you find that if you've met a person and like half a week later you're still affected by that meeting that often means that there's an astral aspect to your, to your conflict um, on an astral level there has to be a contact, so often um, the contact between two spirits is either because they have a very similar vibration or they have a connection on a karmic level. Um, this is not always true because people can move or alter the vibration of their astral bodies. And this is also your primary means of defense. So if another person has a very heavy energy you can make your energy lighter or if another person has a very light energy, you can make your own energy heavier, so that their energy simply cannot connect to your energy body anymore. Okay, um, so this is the theoretical uh, story. Um, so, how does this apply to your situation? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So the problems are affecting yeah the the middle three chakras, the stomach, the heart, and the throat. So they're basically um, um, 
there are several techniques you can use to um, to stabilize your chakras. Um, the um, the easiest way is in a way to um, uh, to strengthen your your own stomach chakra and to also to try to place the energy of your stomach chakra at the edge of your aura so that from your willpower your own discipline you create a very strong wall a very strong barrier which filters out all the other energies so then um, you in a way uh, make that chakra which has the heaviest energy also the warrior within you so that the other ones are protected by this warrior chakra within your being so this is the easiest way to really yeah focus to meditate on it to also to visualize this yellow light and this golden light forming a ball around you or a golden egg around you which uh, protects your whole being um, another way uh, uh, you can work with it is in a way to uh, program your uh, your third chakra to deflect these energies so to um, not so much to create an entire ball around yourself but just allow these energies to go either reflect them back to the person or to go to the ground or into the cosmos or wherever they don't do any harm so you can also use this third chakra to create a barrier like a mirror um, Another way um, uh, to, uh, to work with the uh, third chakra is to make it reactive. So you can also basically um, create a mirror reaction. So when his or her energy penetrates into yours, you also send a dart of energy in, in their direction. So every time they hit you or slap you or push you, they get slapped or hit or pushed back. And you can also make this into an automatic mechanism so and quite quickly they learn like the more they hit you the more they get hit so they will stop doing it um, this is a little bit trickier a more difficult way of uh, of defense to uh, to build up and it has to be also quite specific because you don't want to react in this way to everybody so that everybody who tries to get in touch with you gets hit by you. <laughs> so this is not a, a good technique to, to, to use if you just start working with reprogramming your chakras. Um, what is um, uh, a, good, uh, a good technique is also to try to um, to try to correct a measured response. So ideally, you want to um, to use uh, to use no more energy than the other person is using, so that you don't tire too much. And ideally, you would actually use the other person's energy for powering your own defense. So if the other energy comes. Um, using a little bit of fire energy in your third chakra you would uh, uh, make that energy neutral and then you can use it to strengthen your defense so the more they attack you the weaker they get and the stronger your defense becomes but also this is a little bit tricky because working with the fire element is uh, is a little bit hard but uh, these would be uh, yeah, very good defenses uh, to, uh, to build up. Um, if we look at how to defend the heart chakra, um, the, the, the simplest way is, uh, uh, since the heart chakra is very flexible, is to close it or either to go in a higher or lower vibration. And um, if you want to, in a way, transform the other person, uh, you can also close the rear of the heart chakra, so you close the, 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 yeah, the heart chakra on your back so that the other person's energy doesn't come in too much, but you try to send this harmonizing uh, energy uh, towards them or towards the energy which is uh, coming at you. And often you can make the other person's energy, or this works especially well if the other person is sending spirits or negative entities towards you. You can often yeah, turn them around 
uh, using this love and this harmony to work in your favor, to ha start helping you. In a way you try to convert them by your compassion, by your love. It's really like turning the other cheek, as it says in the, in the Bible. And this can be quite effective, especially if the other person is not very firm in their, in their attacks. So if they are just frustrated or hurt or upset, then often this love can have a healing effect. And by healing your enemy, they can also become your friend. Um, another method to, uh, to work with the heart chakra, but this is a little bit more advanced, is really to make contact with your own higher self or with your guides. Um, your higher self has a lot of uh, knowledge about what your structure should be like and by um, increasing the influence of the higher self the heart becomes more powerful as a harmonizing force towards you but also towards other elements in your life. So um, the stronger the higher self, the divine spark in your heart becomes, also the more um, your capability will be in recognizing uh, right from wrong or when it comes to like should this person be on my path or not and also connecting to the right people who can teach you something and not being open to people who are just distractions on your, uh, uh, on your road to development. Um, and this meditation on the, on the divine in the heart um, is also a very good way to heal and to harmonize yourself after an attack, after an attack has occurred. Um, the throat chakra is also a very interesting one because the throat chakra is also a very important defensive chakra because it also has your morality in it. Um, so also your idea of right and wrong and what should be filtered out. So this helps you to recognize whether an energy is, is good or bad for you and uh, whether also the person has in a way a similar uh, thought structure or personality structure. If you're really compatible, if you can work together and if you feel some tension around the throat that often means like okay though, even though we might try to do the same thing or try to work together there is probably going to be some um, yeah, miscommunication at the, at the very least. It means that there will be a challenge. Um, the throat chakra is also very important when it comes to, um, as I said, relating to the env environment. So one of the effects if your uh, throat chakra feels attacked is that you also start to, um, to decrease the size of your aura and thereby you're less able to absorb energy from your environment. So if there's an attack on the throat chakra, it also means that you're getting weaker because you're unable to nourish yourself, to feed yourself with your breath from your environment, but also through food and through water. Um, so this is ultimately on the long term something which is weakening you. And um, it's also showing you um, um, that the other person's energy are in a way invading or being present in your in your direct environment so the best way to deal with that is to start protecting your environment and to making sure that your environment cannot be invaded like this so uh, cleaning your home uh, talking to the spirits in your home to try to create a positive energy or not to allow these disturbances from this other person to come into your home are very important measures you can take um, placing, uh, wearing amulets uh, which are protective in nature, placing icons or images which have been uh, blessed in your house. <coughs> These are all measures to uh, yeah, prevent this energy from coming in your direct environment. And as I said also, like working with air spirits is very important so that the energies which are carried into your environment are not allowed in. So try to talk to, to the air spirits or to summon air spirits and ask them to keep the energies out. 
And this may seem like a very difficult thing, like how do I talk to air spirits, how do I summon them? Um, air spirits, they carry information and um, they're drawn to, to this process. So if you just open your hand and in a way allow your emotions or your healing powers or other things to flow from your hand, this creates an, an energy, a subtle energy which can be moved to another place. And if you just blow on your hand very gently while generating these energies, air spirits will be drawn to it. It's kind of like a signal, there's an energy here, there's air here, there's movement here. So the air spirit will come and in a way wonder where should this energy go. And once you feel that these air elementals are there, you can try to communicate with them what you want to do. And um, air spirits are not very mental, like mental communication doesn't work with spirits. So you have to, in a way, give an example. So after this air spirit is there, you can either have a visualization of you fighting or pushing the other person's energy away. Or you can have do it yourself, you can push the other person's energy away because the air spirit will be watching and it will try to repeat what you are doing. And um, so you call an air spirit by blowing on your hand and you visualize how you fight or push away this energy or you block it or do something to show to the air spirit that it should not be here, it should be transported elsewhere. And what you do then is in a way you try to see if the air spirit understands it. So you try to invite a little bit of this energy by a photograph or something else and place it on the hand, which is the focus point. And if you notice that then the energy which is in the picture or in the object you got of this person yeah, is taken away, that means that the air spirit has understood what you wanted to do. And you repeat it because you need probably several air spirits to really clean your entire environment, your entire house. And um, air spirits are usually um, quite mobile. So often if you educate a group of air spirits to hang around your house and to do this, you will find that often in a month's time you need to do it again because the air spirits have wandered off and gone elsewhere to do other things. Um, but it can create a very nice protection. You can also try to bind an air spirit into an amulet to keep a certain type of energy away. Uh, but yeah, making amulets is yeah, an, an art in itself, but it's, if uh, the problem is very specific, one specific person, an amulet with an air spirit is a very good way of, um, of blocking it. Okay, um, one, yeah, one other thing you can, um, you can also do is to try to um, make contact with your egregores because your egregores probably have a very similar idea of right and wrong and of purity um, and by uh, attuning to these egregores or um, yeah, working with these egregores more they will also try to create the same energy within you and around you to guide you on that specific path so yeah, working with your egregore is also a very nice way for uh, self-protection. Um, if the problem is more than personal, so here we're talking about a personal struggle between you and another person, but sometimes the struggle is more than that. So a person might be trying to harm your family or um, the area where you live, your house or your city. And when it becomes about a place or a group rather than one individual, then there are larger powers, uh, gods, goddesses, uh, or landscape angels or elves who might be willing to interfere or to protect you. So we've already talked about Njort. Um, so if some place is really upset or some power is really twisting things in the wrong way, asking a greater landscape spirit to intervene, is, uh, is an excellent way of dealing with it unless you become a geomancer yourself and you are able to work with the energies of your surroundings uh, directly. 
Um, when it comes to uh, protection uh, from guides, um, it's a very specific thing. Some people have protective guides, but most people don't. Um, guides will always try to protect their human from any disruption. So it is not due to their lack of desire to protect you, but it's usually due to a lack of skill that you are or are not protected. Um, so if I yeah, talk about myself, I would very much like to have a protective guide and not to be bothered with energetic combat or other distractions. But um, there is a limit to the number and skill of guides. So um, to me they say like, well, you have enough knowledge, you have enough skill, so you can take care of yourself and we will take care of people who actually really need us. Um, so in general you can also petition for protective guides and if the problem is indeed one which is beyond your level or beyond your skill you will be assigned a protector. Uh, but if the challenge is some you could rise to, if you can develop the skill or the power to deal with it, you won't get a protective guide. Um, how guides uh, generally work is uh, mainly by trying to attract positive things. Um, so they try to take you out of situations which are unhealthy for you or which are not good for you. So very much the, uh, they will often send dreams or inspirations telling you to, to not see a person or to avoid certain situations, not pick up the phone when they call or give premonitions like this to try to guide you away from, uh, from the conflict. Um, what they also uh, can do is to try to help you with visualizations. So they can inspire you. So if you try to go into a meditation and to try to visualize what is the problem, what is happening to me, how I'm being attacked, uh, or what is yeah, what I should do or change about myself to get out of this. They will often help you through dreams or through images or through knowledge which pops into your mind. Um, so, uh, but ultimately the, uh, you are a much more powerful generator of energy because we are alive, we have both a body and a spirit and we can connect to all the vibrations of the energies around you. So when it comes to strength, to raw power, we are the ones who have the raw power and not our guides. Um, so they can just help us to use our power in a, in a better way. Um, and often the, the guides will also tell us whether it is, what is the best approach. Should we try to, to learn from our enemies? Should we try to teach our enemies? Um, should we develop uh, skill or should we develop strength? Um, because any battle can be won either by brute force or by skill or by a combination of both. Um, there's a saying, uh, if brute force doesn't work, you're not using enough of it. Um, so ultimately with enough energy, um, any resistance can be overcome. And uh, generation of energy and collection of energy is a very important skill, especially in the shamanic tradition. And women have it a lot easier than men, because women are able to store more energy in their physical bodies than men. So if you're a man, you have to actually alter your energy body to get to increase your capacity for, uh, for storing energy. While yeah, for women it's uh, relatively easy and energy is stored in the womb and around the shoulder areas, in the, top, in the top of the lungs. These are natural repositories for, uh, for energies. And these can be stretched, so if you keep on filling them and filling them, ultimately they will become bigger and bigger, so that you are able to yeah, keep going for longer amounts of time and to keep functioning uh, even though you're, you're fighting at the same time. Uh, so this is a very important lesson we can learn from, uh, uh, from being attacked, to increase our capability of storing. Um, it can also be that we need to uh, increase our capability of absorbing or projecting energies. 
so we need to widen our energy channels. And it's the same with any muscle. If you flex it enough, it becomes bigger. And it's the same with energy channels. If you use the energy channel a lot, it also becomes bigger. And if you stop using it for a time, it will shrink again. Um, um, so this is really about the, um, the raw force approach. And if you use the subtlety approach, it becomes about flexibility and about adaptiveness. And to make your energy body more flexible and more adaptive, uh, it needs to be as pure as possible. Because the lower vibrations, also the lower vibrations of breathing, food and environment, they decrease your flexibility. They're, they're slow, they're sluggish. So uh, eating meat and uh, um, carrots, turnips, uh, onions, garlic, um, they create a very heavy energy body, which is very good at absorbing blows, but not very good at avoiding blows. So if you really want to go for the avoidance and moving your energy out of the way, um, you should yeah, meditate a lot, pray a lot, so that all the energies you absorb are optimally digested. And uh, try not to take in heavy energies uh, as much. And what is also important is also to deal with all the things which are um, creating rigidity in your energy body. So you can do yoga, but the important part of the yoga is you can use it to find all the blockages in your energy body, which are usually re related to either your convi convictions, emotional traumas, uh, memories, uh, habits, um, um, and all these convictions and all these patterns, they uh, yeah, decrease your flexibility. And ultimately also these um, habits, they drag you down uh, into a lower vibration. Uh, they make you more easily controlled also by lower vibrations. They make you more vulnerable to problems on, uh, uh, for instance, a financial level or on a, a social level. Well, if you have a lot of flexibility, all these lower vibrational problems, they won't bother you as much. Um, actually, no problems will bother you as much because you can easily find a solution or change your attitude or um, uh, deal with things differently. And um, if you're fighting using, using subtlety, it's not so much about um, like two forces colliding but it is about looking for the weak point in your enemy. What is their motivation? And often uh, trying to find their traumas. And by awakening their traumas or awakening their feelings of guilt, you can make them fight themselves instead of fighting you. So their energy becomes absorbed in their own inner struggle and they have very little power left to fight you with. And this is yeah, also a very, very beautiful technique. But as I said, it is very hard to create an energy body which is both strong and very flexible and skilled. But um, those who have such energy bodies are natural um, energetic combatants, energetic fighters. They're really the warrior uh, type. And you can make yourself into a warrior, but generally people are born with the warrior constellation. They have these types of energy bodies. And you can train, but it is yeah, uh, partly skill, but also for a very large part, talent. Okay. Um, I see here that there is a, a second question. Uh, oh, yeah, and a third and fourth. Um, yes, if you are in a location or in a group where the energy is very positive, for instance during a, a concert, can you channel these energies or is it uh, impossible or is it something we should not do? Um, yes, the answer is we should do it. Uh, if you are in a, in a place where yeah, the energy is good, you should really open yourself up as much as possible to, to really replenish your energies 
what is important though is that you uh, don't disturb the energy. So what some people do is they um, uh, stop taking responsibility for their own heavier or negative energies. They just release them into the space. And if you do that, you in a way harm the energy in the space and you in a way pollute everybody else's food. So it's a little bit like you're sitting on a table and there's a beautiful dinner and you decide to spit in the dinner because you need to get rid of your junk and everybody else has to eat the food which you spat in. <laughs> um, so, because if this positive energy comes to you and you feel supported, it is very natural also that you start working on your own negative energies and you start releasing them and transmuting them. But you should really transmute them fully before you release them or really send them through your own uh, grounding back into the earth instead of releasing them into the space. And especially the Dutch are very very bad at energetic hygiene. So um, it's also very much to do with, with consciousness. And if you're willing to be in a very positive energy but to remain conscious of your heavier energies, your challenges, um, then yeah, you will generally not pollute the energy. You will feel like, okay, this is so beautiful, but also it touches some pain in me and uh, that is okay because you're in, in touch with your negative side, your shadow, you control it. You don't just throw it away or get rid of it. Um, and by dealing with it, you're also respectful to the other people and it can start to transform slowly. And this is important in your contact if you're in a group but also in a one-on-one -on -one contact with other people. So if other people um, um, yeah, are close to you, you should yeah, take care. You can talk about your problems, you can share your problems, but you should not release your problems into somebody else. And generally you're defended by your aura. Um, but especially if you're in physical contact or you're making love, this can happen very easily and very accidentally even. That uh, yeah, people get affected by, by other person's negativity. Um, the thing to do if you do pick up somebody else's negativity is to try to send it back to uh, return to sender. Because it is their problem, it is for them very easy to deal with it because it's their energy and it will respond very easily to their spirit, to their will. But if somebody else's energy enters in your energy body, it is very unresponsive, very difficult to move it, to transform it. Um, is it also to, uh, possible to uh, take energy from the cosmos and bring it to you to charge yourself. Well, that is rather more difficult um, because the contact between you and other cosmic powers is highly regulated. And there is basically um, there are energetic channels, uh, so there are energy channels between our planet and all the other planets and planetoids in our solar system and also with our Sun. And our Sun is connected to other solar systems. Um, so it's in a way a hierarchy. So your the planetary consciousness has to allow you to make contact with other celestial bodies including the Sun. And if the Sun agrees with it then you can get into contact with um, energies from yeah, alien cultures and other things. Uh, this is kind of the legal way to do it. It is also possible to do it through unsanctioned channels and this is usually how it happens. Um, but these energies can really disrupt the um, kind of the path of the evolutionary evolution of our planet and the evolution of our consciousness on this planet. Um, so there is, in a way, um, you could say legal immigrants. There can be energies and spirits coming from other solar systems, migrating to the Earth, 
and they're here within a certain arrangement. They have to follow a certain course, do certain tests to be able to integrate well here. But you also have illegal immigrants, which are energies or spirits which come from other solar systems that are generally harmful to, to the system. Um, so they're harmful to our solar system and to our planet. Um, so it is important if we do this to really get the support first of our own planet, of the planet Earth, then of the solar spirits, then of the solar spirits of the other solar system and of the planetary spirit of the planet where we are getting these energies from. And if we have all these blessings, then also the energies we bring here will be a blessing to our planet and to ourselves. But to just go hunting for energies or to rely on energies from, from other planets it is generally quite unwise unless we really check that they are from a bona fide source. Um, so most of the things which are done in regards to aliens are not done in a proper way and are actually um, yeah, a little bit disruptive um, and sometimes harmful to the evolution of our planetary consciousness. Um, one very important task actually in this uh, current time is to help these legal uh, immigrants to, um, to gain a foothold. So it is very difficult if you migrate to another country, so it's also very difficult for these energies and these spirits if they come to our earth, because they don't understand it, they don't have friends, they don't speak the, the language, they don't know how to deal with our culture, with the energy bodies, with the prevalent egregores on this planet. So they often have a very difficult time for at least three to five incarnations until they get to know the system. And um, often people are discouraged and they decide to leave and not to come back. And if you, um, in a way, help uh, energies from their home systems to be more available on our planet, it becomes easier for these legal immigrants to, uh, to stay here, to develop themselves and to help us to develop with the new impulses which they bring to us. And um, for that purpose you should make a little temple or an altar so these energies can come to our planet in a more uh, continuous fashion. And they can spread around your house and around your neighborhood and integrate into the energy grid of the earth uh, more easily. Um, to do this, um, you need, in a way, uh, a transformer, because these energies are of a very different nature and it needs to connect to something which is of our nature, which is able to be transformed by this cosmic energy. Um, so if the energies are too different, nothing is going to happen, but if there is a resonance between something of our Earth and that energy, then something can happen. So, how to make an antenna? It is basically try to find something of this Earth and try to make it susceptible to this cosmic energy. And generally, if you, for instance, have a meteorite, this is ideal material because it's, yeah, by, often by the impact, it has absorbed elements of the Earth, but it also is very used to dealing with this cosmic energy. It's and the act of actually transforming material into an antenna is again working with elemental powers um, or working with really advanced nature spirits who have experience in this process of integrating cosmic powers into nature. So the higher, more advanced nature spirits can also transform it for you if you don't have the skill in working with elemental powers. Um, and yeah, charging your own battery, um, yes, this is very possible with these cosmic energies. Uh, one of the things you have to be yeah, a little bit wary of is that these cosmic energies, they are a little bit like the fire, they try to um, create their own system on Earth. So they tend to make things grow in you, but also to destroy other things in you. 
So it's very similar to working with an aggregor. They have a very guiding, strong guiding impulse, these cosmic energies. And if you absorb too much of them, you can change too quickly. And this can create a lot of stress for your system. And it can also make you um, alienate you. So if you become more attuned to another star system than to, than to our own solar system, then you will experience the same problems as the immigrants are experiencing. And you can do this purposefully if you want to migrate to their solar system. Um, this is a very good way to prepare yourself for going there to change your energetic balance so your next incarnation won't be in our solar system but in theirs. Um, but yeah, it's an investment and it will yeah, create troubles for you here but make it easier for you there. Ah, yes. Um, the next question is, is it possible that emotions float around like little spheres? Um, and uh, you had the experience that you bumped into this emotional programming. Um, hmm. Yes, this is this is indeed, yeah, uh, very possible. Um, locations can have. Um, uh, an emotional charge and this emotional charge can become even uh, self-aware um, or it can be also a remnant of a person who passed on uh, for instance if I die in a war and I'm filled with fear of, of dying uh, my spirit might reincarnate and in this process of reincarnation it might leave behind this fear of dying because it has no purpose for it, it has already happened, but instead of cleaning up after myself, this energy, yeah, part of my energy body is still intact. And if there is uh, enough of similar energies, it won't decay. So if it is on a battlefield where many people have the same fear, then such an energy might in a way be stabilized by the energy of the environment. So often you find that these energy balls will be very persistent if there is very much of the same energy around or if other people um, generate these emotions. So if I have a lot of fear of dying, I will actually draw um, yeah, these yeah, um, remnants of, of persons or personalities to myself uh, like a magnet because similar energies attract similar energies. Um, and depending on how uh, intense the experience was, these energy balls will also decay more uh, quickly or less quickly. So if it is a fleeting fear, like um, I'm on a bike, I suddenly see a truck heading my way and I swerve away and, oh, that was exciting, um, <laughs> then it is a very short experience and also I don't have time to really visualize my death or uh, really to, to, to start fighting against uh, for my life. Uh, so it will just be an emotional experience but my willpower and my thoughts won't be integrated into it and the more integrated the experience is and the more intense the experience is the stronger the structure will be and the less the decay will be. So often if a person is involved in a process for hours or days um, then the structure will be very, very strong. So a person who is um, tortured to death or um, uh, raped will create a very strong um, emotional uh, sphere in, uh, in that location. And if a person, yeah, in a way falls off the stairs and breaks their neck, yeah, it will leave some emotional sphere but it will decay very rapidly while these other emotional spheres can hang around for many years even. Um, and these things are also called astral shadows or astral grooves and because the presence of such an emotional sphere can also attract people to that place who will reenact the problem, will reenact what happened there and there this astral groove can grow deeper and deeper and 
draw more and more people in it. So sometimes you hear of a certain place where always people get healed, or always people get sick, or always people get lost. And this is often due to this emotional groove which just deepens and deepens. Because every person who gets lost, yeah, yeah strengthens that structure. Um, these structures have a natural decay, but um, if they're really, if you want to transmute them, um, you really have to either find uh, a way to destabilize them, so look for the weakest part in them, which can be emotional or uh, mental or uh, connected to the will, and um, in a way. Uh, dissolve the, the, uh, the structure. So look for the weakest link and destroy the weakest link and then the rest will destabilize as well. And such a sphere will disappear in usually in a matter of hours or days depending on how much energy is contained in it. Um, another way to... Uh, uh, there are actually two ways to destabilize it. One is using your own life force which is very good at transmuting things. So the willpower or the emotion or the thoughts within it, you can change, you can tune into it. And at that moment you feel the emotion or you think the thoughts or you have that will. And by changing that energy, by in a way changing your will and dragging the other energy which is stuck along with it, or by changing your emotions or your thoughts, such a sphere can destabilize and it can uh, disintegrate. Um, one of the things which also happens if, if such a sphere exists, it will attract spirits which will also have a very similar nature or use similar energies. And if you have both the astral groove and the spirits, the situation can be very complex to resolve or the space can be rather difficult uh, to clean. And sometimes it's easiest to get rid of the spirits first and then the astral groove. Sometimes it's easiest to get rid of the astral groove first and then the spirits depends a little bit on the situation but the spirits will tend to protect the astral groove because it draws people to it and it helps them to reenact certain things which they like to yeah, have reenacted um, okay very interesting questions this time and already a lot of time has passed as well so I think I would like to um, finish with an, uh, with an exercise since we had to skip the exercises uh, last few times. So what I would like to do is a little meditation on, uh, on purity. So we'll try to enhance the flexibility of our energy bodies and to also look for impurities. So take an easy position and relax yourself. And allow yourself space to see yourself, to transmute yourself. So feel how your aura, how your awareness is spreading, is flowing outward. And try to make it as large as possible. But also realize that it's not just about you. Because you're part of a larger system, you're part of your food in your kitchen, you're part of the cleaning powers in your bathroom and in your toilet, you're part of the inspirational powers in your bedroom. So try to really spread out your aura so it encompasses not just yourself but also all the things which you're connected to, your egregores, your family, your partner, your children. And become aware of this great web of energies. And have a look at how much of this web is in a golden color. And how much of this web is in other colors. Because the connections which are in gold are harmonious connections. The webs which are in other colors are unharmonious connections. And 
try to focus your attention. Start with the room you're in. And feel how much gold there is. Go to your kitchen and feel how much gold there is there. And if things are not gold, it's not necessarily a problem, but it is something to be aware of. So, for instance, one of the things I'm feeling is that there is a more dull connection between me and the fridge. It is metal, it's full of chemicals. But, of course, it's also not something I would want to eat, but its energy is there. I'm not expecting the energy of the fridge to feed me, like the energy of the food. But it's important to look at the balance. Is it healthy for you to be in the kitchen? Or is it draining you? Is there more gold? Or is there more silver or copper or blue? or grey. If so, maybe you want to look at changing that space or isolating yourself from those influences. This can be done quite easily by in just a visualization cutting the line separating your energetic communication with the things which are not good for you. It's a little bit like a plant. If you want it to grow in a certain shape or in a certain direction, you cut away all the things which grow in the wrong direction. So think of the place where you work, maybe your friends, your colleagues. But also there without judgment, like oh I hate him or oh he's upsetting me, just cut away those lines which are unbalancing you. New lines are being formed constantly but just being around somebody or a place you will attune yourself to it. This is simple maintenance, cleaning. So you are able to focus, able to feed yourself without being poisoned by all these other things coming from your environment. You may find that some of the lines are very thick and difficult to cut. You may even have protectors, such as in powers who don't want you to leave, don't want you to separate yourself from them. And if you see such a very thick line or a protector, it's important to look at the karma, to try to discover what is the use of this connection which is harming me, what is the lesson, or which, what is the transformation I need to go through for this line to be cut. Because obviously you're not ready yet to cut that line. These are your learning lines and also new lessons come into your path again and again. And if you see a guardian or something protecting the line, there's no use fighting them because when you are ready, 
when you are the person who is ready to cut the line, they will just allow you to cut the line. They are the servants of karma, the servants of justice. But if you do not understand their presence or the reasons for their action, seek contact with Yama, the Lord of Karma, or with gods or goddesses of justice or fate. Now to end this meditation, go back to your core and breathe and feel that as you breathe, you breathe out this golden light and you draw in this golden light, how the whole web starts to move with you, and that there is an inflow and an outflow of energy you become one with your environment, that the energy flows through you, reviving you, purifying you and supporting you and you do the same to everything with which you are connected. And this is a very good meditation to try to do at least once a month. Thank you again very much for uh, joining. And we will speak then on next week, Thursday. And thank you for the questions. They were very beautiful this week once more.